Welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I am Kyra, and today I am joined by Jane Stoller. She is a life business organizer, speaker, author, university instructor, um, and her passion is in decluttering and organizing business processes. So welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast, Jane. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead. Let's dive into um, decluttering and organizing processes because I am a stickler for process. I love it. Um, So I'm super excited to um, hear from you. Um, And I feel like I've already learned a lot from you because I've been on your blog and (laughs) and looking around. So I feel like um, I know a little bit, but um, let's, let's kick off with you telling my audience about yourself and what you do. Perfect. Well, um, I love, I have a passion for organizing and decluttering spaces and people, as you said. (laughs) But uh, when I was six years old, I really, this passion kind of, it just happened naturally. And they say if anybody has kids when you're around six is when you either start being organized or disorganized. And it's also a great time to change those habits. So when I was young, I organized everything from my pet cats when I grew up on a farm to stuffed animals. (laughs) And then in high school and then in university, I was just organizing and helping people get organized. But I continued to devalue kind of my passion and my experience and skills around that because I didn't think it was a real job or I could, you know, society said, you know, go to university, get a corporate job. So I did. I worked in corporate for over a decade. And even during that time, I was still organizing people, things and processes. Mm -hmm. And I took the entrepreneurial leap just under four years now and started Organize Jane. And now I can make a bigger impact helping exactly who I want to help, not only shareholders. Awesome. I love that. And um, kudos to you, A, for following your passion and what you um, are good at. And, you know, not like you're not good at other things, but I mean, obviously, there are a lot of people who struggle with being organized and people that struggle with being able to actually create the right processes to manage their businesses. So um, kudos to you for like doing that. So congratulations on taking the leap and um, being <laughs> being on your own. So I think that's wonderful. Let's talk about um, a couple of areas. Um, Some of the things that you have already, that you speak to on your blog um, that just really sort of grabbed me. um, One was really around decluttering your mind. So as people move into a new year, every year people are like, oh, I've got these goals and I want to be successful in that. But um, what, what are your thoughts on being able to like truly declutter your mind so that you can set effective goals um, for the year? It's a great question. And in Decluttering for Dummies, my um, the book that I released last November, I wrote it in three parts. And the first part is all about uh, decluttering your mind because it is the most important part. The second part is a space is in stuff. And the third part is on digital. So I started with decluttering your mind and made it kind of the most important part of the book because that's where decluttering really starts. When our brain is cluttered, our space is cluttered, we can't focus. We can't achieve what we want to achieve in a day, let alone in our lifetime. So I think decluttering our mind is super important and stuff affects it. Digital um, influences affect it. And I think we have to really take a good hard look at our surroundings, our computer, our time and our calendars to really start decluttering our mind. What would be a step? that you recommend people take um (laughs) because i know a lot of times people are like well i want to declutter and get off of like you know spending too much of the time on social media i want to you know i want to be able to focus on these things and obviously people may go in with the right intention but it's sort of hard to do that you know when you haven't been doing it so what's uh um what what can advice can you give for someone who is looking to just make that first step A small first step is just to really uh, get a time cube, uh, put a timer on and say, you know what, I'm only going to focus on, let's say doing my emails. I'm only going to do that for 20 minutes right now. I'm going to shut off my, I'm going to put my phone in a different room. Maybe you you have your clock timer or a watch or something to say 20 minutes. I'm only focusing on one task and take away all the other distractions. If you can, maybe even change your space so you're not looking at the stuff around you. Go somewhere neutral and focus only on that one task. Start really small and you'll be surprised at how much you can actually get done in a small amount of time when you remove all the distractions. I like that you mentioned going somewhere neutral. So obviously with 
the majority of us working from home these days. Um, what do you think about? So like I always work in my office. So now like my office where it used to just be glow up girl. Now like my office is glow up girl in my regular job, you know, in my corporate job. So I'm like in the space all the time. <laughs> so, um, but the day when I'm like doing, um, when I'm working, a lot of times, you know, work with me, they're like, oh yeah, I'm working outside today or I'm doing, uh, you know, I'm just changing it up a little bit. And I always feel like, wow, no, if I work outside, like then I'm going to be cheating on, you know, like cheating on work. And, and I don't want to be like, enjoy, like I can't be outside enjoying being outside. So I always just feel like I have to be very like um, focused in this space, in this office. <laughs> That's a really good point though. And I think um, it depends on how you manage your time and how you could be most efficient. And I think in the corporate world, we're very used to, you have to be in the office from these amount of hours. And if you're not in an office, you're not productive, but really your productivity depends on how you, you know the times you're most productive. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you're, there's one, place at the table where you can hammer out all these emails or get a project done, whatever it may be. So the productivity, your office could be that for you. And when you get there, you know, you can focus, you, you've got, you have no clutter around you, but really sometimes changing up the space can help people get rid of the stuff they know they should be doing or thinking about, or if you have something, even a pile of papers, you know, you had to file for a couple of weeks and you keep staring at it, that energy is still going there. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it is good to uh, change the space up just to, you know, if you, if you go outside, there's no files you can organize or anything you can look at. You're right. <laughs> staring at your computer. So don't look at it as a bad thing. It, it could be um, an enhancer to your productivity. And I don't mm -hmm. think you need to be in an office, but just make sure you surround yourself right. with things that makes you productive. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like that. I mean, like I, I make a point to, clean my desk like every Friday to get, you know, papers off or notes or, you know, sticky notes or things like that so that I don't go into the next week, week um, with clutter. Um, and it was just funny because I was like laughing. My dog and I went out yesterday and, you know, it's so nice to be able to have those breaks. Whereas when I was in a office space, I was just sitting at my desk all day, you know, and you only take the bathroom break or the go heat up my lunch break, but not like ever like really getting out. So like, you know, this for me, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> I get to go on walks. I get to, you know, I get to walk my dog in the morning. I get to take him out at lunch and I get to, you know, they're the breaks that I just never really realized that like things I was missing. So it's <laughs> definitely um, been, been, been good. Now, let's move on to one of my favorites. It is removing clutter from your to-do list um, and how to become a better manager of your time. So, because <laughs> I know a lot of people probably struggle with that, with having to-do lists like to no ends. Oh yeah, I'm gonna show you my to-do list because it's right here too. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually, this has been a challenging me for years and now I have a system down that I share with uh, my clients and, and my friends, but it, I only have four priorities that I do every single day. And okay. if, if the task doesn't relate to those priorities, I usually don't do them anymore because in being an entrepreneur, especially we think we have to do so many things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. my four priorities are sales, getting clients. That's my number one priority. My second mm -hmm. is quality control, improving my offers, my courses and my books. Um, three is getting social proof and um, testimonials, you know, and sharing that with my community. And number four mm -hmm. is being more profitable, reducing my costs or maximizing my. So those are my four things. That, that's my where my business rides on. If I if any of my tasks don't relate to that, I just don't do them. And every single day, I also I use the Ivy Lee method of tasks. So that means I have seven tasks that I do that I write down in priority order, no more. And then I, I start with them and then I, I cross them off and they can move over. I don't have to do them all in one day, but I don't have more than seven. And the Ivy Lee method is very, very old school. It's, it was in the 1800s, I believe. And it was um, just a simple way to just prioritize your seven tasks. It's not fancy. There's no software. <laughs> love it. No, I like that because I love a good, I'm a to-do list girl. I write a list like every day, you know, I look at, what did I do for today? What needs to move over? And 
it really just helps me to keep my focus. You know, like like on Monday, I have three main things that I have to get done when I start for work and things that, like you said, that don't fall inside of those main three, then maybe I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> but I think a lot of people definitely struggle, um, struggle with that. And tell me this, do you... <laughs> There are a couple of people I know that we do this. We write down, like we may have done something that wasn't on the to-do list, but we write it in the to-do list just so we can strike it out. So. <laughs> oh man, that's why I like the Ivy League system because it only gives you seven in a day. You yes. prioritize and you can't put too many down there, right? Exactly. I know we were like, I was like, oh, you do that too? Oh my God, I do that too. And it's so crazy. But it's just that, that way of like, you're like, I accomplished something, especially yeah. when, especially when your to-do list, the to-do list you had turns out to be a different one when you walk into, you know, when you log into work that day, yeah. where it was like, I was going to do these three things, but this one thing took precedent over all those things for the day. Yeah. And I also think that your priorities and tasks are different. So that's why I really mm -hmm. focus on my, I know my priorities for my business. It took me a while to figure them out, but now the tasks are to support that. And if they don't, I don't mm -hmm. do them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even in yeah. corporate, if there's something, your your boss has your priority and your objectives. If some mm -hmm. tasks that you, he or she is laying out don't fit those, then why are you, you can question those too. I, I always do that. I think people feel like a lot of times, um, because your boss is like, oh, I got this project for you. But it is, it, it's laddering back to the priorities, which in most, you know, corporate environments, the priorities align to the business, you know, priorities. So your priorities come there. But then when you leave from priorities to just having like a layer of like additional projects, you know, that's where you do have to ask sort of the clarifying yeah. questions about, 100%. yeah, <laughs> how does this fit into those exactly. priorities? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's talk about the tools. Um, you talk about three tools um, to set up and organize business systems. So could you walk through um, those tools for us? One of the big things, I, I have a six step process that I teach uh, specifically women entrepreneurs in my six week accelerator course. And mm -hmm. a lot of different tools we use, but first and foremost is that you need to have some kind of accounting and receipt tracking tool. So that is the number one tool. I don't. It, uh, I use Neat for my receipts and QuickBooks for my accounting, but there's lots of them out there. Mm -hmm. If you do not have some system to keep track of your numbers, you should get one immediately. That's my, one of my number one tools. Um, I also suggest a time cube, which um, keep, helps keep you on track. That's just a time management tool. It's a physical tool. And the third one is some kind of communication tool with your team. It can even be Google Documents. It can be Slack. It can be, but just have some. It should be the same for every everybody on your team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those are good. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and those, I, I like those three because they're actually quite simple. Um, yeah. <laughs> sort of like, uh, but he, again, you probably, probably there may be people that don't um, don't have those types of tools um, set up. And that's like the foundation, right? Um, to be exactly. managing successfully. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We always <laughs> overcomplicate everything. So that's why I say, mm -hmm. say simple, reduce what you're, you don't need complicated tech and stuff. You just need some basic things to help you understand your numbers, your time and communicate. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, let's talk about how you help women entrepreneurs. Um, so what type of um, women um, and entrepreneurs do you normally um, work with? So I do, I work with women who already have a successful product or service. So if you're just starting out, I'm probably not the right business coach because when you're just starting a business, I've been there myself, you are just so all over the place that you're focused on getting your messaging out, who you're serving, your niche, you're getting your product and service successful. You are really busy. Then once you've started to get momentum and sell your products or services, you realize now you're overwhelmed because your back end of your business is not organized. So that's where I really come in and help you say, okay, now you, it's a champagne problem to work with me because you've already got a great product service. Let's make it even more efficient for you so you can scale and, and reduce your overwhelm. And I do like that, you know, you understand the new entrepreneur and, <laughs> and so all the things that, oh you know, God. 
<laughs> all the things you're trying to figure out when you first start and 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 you're right like because you're just like going on like a thousand miles a minute trying to like this thing get everything in order and get the word out can you tell us about some of the programs and the courses that you offer yeah, so I actually only only focus on one, and that's 80% of my time I spend on my one course because I really focus on my six-week accelerator course, and it really is my proven six steps that I've been now honing for the last 10 years, and it really does take any entrepreneur, no matter what kind of business, um, from clutter to clarity, I say, because it's the six steps you need to be more efficient in your business. So I only have one program. It's called the Business Booster. And the other 20% of my time, I do do um, speaking and I have books and I have products, but 80% of my time is spent really on my course with my clients. In there. I like that. I like that. So um, this is just an a, a add on a, another question that just came up for me. Um, as you were talking about you focusing on, you know, this course and you having one course, I also think that, you know, that is something also to sort of celebrate. I think a lot of times people feel like I have to do a lot of courses. I have to make a lot of things. Um, you know, if you're the coach and you're, you know, and you're, you're, you're coaching people and you feel like you have to have a lot of things, but I, I really like that you sort of just figured out your lane and how you can help people. Um, and I love the, from clutter to clarity <laughs> because I mean, because I mean, you can be in clutter for a really long time, even when you are even in your own business. And I think that's, you know, a lot of times for like new entrepreneurs or people just starting a business like your your mind is so cluttered because you want to do so much. And you're like, OK, yeah. And then I could do this and I could do this. and I could do this. And I say that only because I raised my hands at being that person who has all these ideas. And so you're trying to like figure figure out like what's the best thing. And then eventually you have to sort of like take a step back and like really look at where you think the most, like where are you going to benefit the most and where are you going to be able to offer people, you know, the best value or the best representation of your product or your brand. So. Yeah, and it didn't, it wasn't, it, it wasn't always like that. I had a lot of different products too and services. And then I read the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller, and I hired a business coach and they really helped me get focused on what, what, um, you know, what my audience wants. You know, I used to make a course that nobody would even buy, right? Or everybody was like, you should make this course. And I go and make it and then it wouldn't sell. So it took me a long time too. Mm -hmm. And it really talked to talking to your clients, talking to your audience, getting mm -hmm. feedback. And then I really believe in focusing on the one thing that'll make you the biggest impact is where you should spend 80% of your time. But again, I hired a business coach to help me get there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think I, and that's also just really important. Um, I mean, I know, um, you know, people have to understand, I always tell people that, you know, you, it, it costs money to invest in yourself. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and it's important to invest in yourself because, we can um, only truly take our, we can only go so far on our own. And they're just simply things that, you know, you won't know. There are things that I didn't. And so I too got a coach, you know, you like, I, you realize that like, no, there are things that I just mm, like, I've tapped out in that area. I don't know what to do next. So it's important, you know, um, to just realize that making an investment in you is, is, is good. <laughs> and it's going to you're going to benefit from it in the end and you're going to be able to make uh, a bigger impact in the area in which you focus when you pull somebody else in. Um, what's that quote where it's like, can't be the smartest person in the room? Oh. <laughs> be the most efficient or be that. Be that. <laughs> it's like, you know, you, you have to like and you have to or someone else said, like, you have to have people that are like 10 steps ahead of you already. Yeah. And um, yeah. and it definitely think that's like so important and and, and key uh, especially as entrepreneurs yeah exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so um how can the audience find you online or contact you regarding um your services yeah so i'm at organizedjane.com and my biggest platforms that i respond to are instagram organized jane i'm on there um intentionally about two hours a day responding to my community so i love hearing from People on there. I also have a YouTube channel, Organized Jane, where I post new videos every Tuesday, and I'm also quite responsive on there. So those are my big platforms, or simply by email, 
and you'll find that at organizedjane.com. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love that. You're even you're even organized and clear on what channels you're going to be on. And that yeah. that's a that's a pro tip audience. It's important, yes, there's so many and you'll you can find me on the Twitter, too, but I won't respond. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm like, yeah, I, I was like, you know what? I don't even want to go to Twitter. I like to watch look at everybody else's tweets and see what's happening. But I don't tweet. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> stay off of that. All right. So. We are now at a uh, part of the show I really like. It's five things, five things with Jane. So this just helps us to understand a little bit more about the inner workings of the mind of Jane. <laughs> so, okay. All right, one, how do you start the day? You know, I don't actually have a morning routine, which is funny because um, I've, everybody asks me this, but I'm a night owl. I like to work at nighttime. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I do, and so it depends on when my meetings are and when I'm when I'm going. But my routine does consist of when I actually, um, you know, whether it's go straight to my computer or work at first. I do the Ivy Lee method. So I write down first. I have a mantra that I repeat every day. I talk about three things I'm grateful for, three must dos. I send happiness to three people, and then I do my Ivy Lee method, method which is the seven tasks. So those are what I write down every day in my agenda but I don't do it specifically even in the morning or at a set time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, so two, what's a project that you're excited about um, in 2021? Oh, my third book, which I'm working on. Uh, it won't be out until 2022, but it's a, I'm working on it now. I'm very excited about it. Awesome, awesome. Um, three, how do you deal with a challenging day? The more organized you are, that's when challenges can come in and they can not disrupt you too much. But for me, I just really strip it down and say, you know what, is the five by five rule, is it going to matter in five years? Like, you know, things, you know, take five minutes, deal with it. And then is it going to matter? No, don't worry about it. <laughs> nice. Um, what's one goal that you've set for this year? And it could be business, personal, whatever you like. Not work out every single day, but just keep to my workout routines and be a bit more health conscious. Mm -hmm. Nice. You know, everybody says and, that, but work on it. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and and here's here's a um here's the final one for you. Obviously, you are a night owl. You work at night, but when you do, when you are ready to sort of settle down for the night, what um how do you end the day? Yeah, I also have a, a, it's a funny question because I'm not a TV person. I don't like mm -hmm. really watching movies or TV that much. So I usually <laughs> listen to an audio book or I work on a project or something that I'm excited. Like I research maybe rental properties or things online that I love researching. Awesome. Awesome. I like that. I <laughs> also do like that you're a night owl. So um, I'm so, sort of, I like, I'm up at night. And I do get a lot of work done at night, but I also get a lot of work done in the morning when people are, you know, everybody else is still sort of hitting snooze. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, I write my books at 9 p.m. to 12 mm -hmm. at night. That's when I, like, I could just so focus uh -huh. and I can write and I don't know why. It's funny. Yeah. No, I like that. I mean, you found what works for you. And yeah. I think that that's all, you know, really and truly the thing that everybody, once you find what works for you, um, then just make a habit, you know, sort of build some habits from the things that are good, that give you like a good framework. And I tried the 5 a.m. club, but then I was always tired and then I was less productive. So it's like, ah, yeah, you know, just do what works for you, especially as an entrepreneur. <laughs> to like give yourself grace when you say I want to sleep in today you know like yeah. I don't want to get up at this time I'm going to sleep till eight you know and just mm -hmm. get up when you get up sometimes yeah. you just have to do that yeah well this has been great Jane um I so appreciate you joining us and when you launch your book in 2022 please come back and um and and share it with us and me and the audience um i'd definitely love to have you back on and this this was really great because i think these are some very like simple tools that people maybe don't think about or just a lot of the tips that you've given just to help us manage um especially that ever-growing to-do list oh yeah <laughs> and again uh, people think i'm this perfect organized person but i'm just relaxed about it because now I'm organized and I have a system. So if all I want to do is give people some tools to live their life happier and less less stressed, right? 
Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jane. Um, good luck to you this year and um, stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back.